Hello, this is John N5ID, and I wanted to give you some hints on calibrating this radio, the recent RS918. Now this is not meant to be an in-depth calibration procedure. It takes quite a while to calibrate this radio. Rather, I just want to get you started on learning how to calibrate the radio. First of all, an in-depth calibration procedure uh, can be found in the description on this video. There is a link to that and you'll have all the information you need if you follow that link. Some of the things that I want to show you to make sure that you change up front, let me exit out of the menu. You start off with the menu and once you get into the menu, to scroll through the menus you turn the RF knob. We're going to start off in the standard menu. To open that up, you turn the RIT knob and you're going to go down until you get to an option called receive transmit frequency uh, translate and what you need here is you need uh, to set that at minus 12 kilohertz to change that you simply turn the RIT knob now what I'm going to do is scroll back up and close that menu out. Make sure your receive uh, transmit frequency X light is set at minus 12. And I'm going to go back up and close this particular menu out. We'll hide it. And the next thing that you need to make sure that you do with this radio, and I cannot overemphasize this point, is set the PA bias. If you do not get the PA bias set properly, what you're going to find is this little radio will overheat. And it's actually fairly simple to set the PA bias. Make sure you have a dummy load connected in line. And when you go to set your uh, PA output, you also want to make sure you have your dummy load in line and you have a good watt meter. Setting the PA bias is not that hard. You simply connect an amp meter between the radio and the positive lead on your power supply. Again, let me say that. You take an amp meter and connect it between the positive lead on your power supply and your radio. And what you do is you go into the PA configuration. You open that up. Make sure that you have your uh, power output set on the smallest, which is 0.5 watts, a half a watt. And once you get this opened up, you're going to scroll down in the PA configuration menu to PA bias. You can see mine is already set on 36. I have already set my PA bias. To set your PA bias is really simple. I don't hook a mic up like it says in the calibration procedure. I simply hook my CW key up and I go to USB mode. And when you use your CW key to key it, you'll see as I key the radio that the PA bias changes to white. Once it's white, we can now change the PA bias. Here's what you do. You begin at zero on your PA bias. You key up at zero and you look at your amp meter and let's say your amp meter shows that you're drawing 400 milliamps with the radio keyed up you then adjust your PA bias using the RIT button and you can see I'm changing my bias I'm going to go back to 36 you change that until you read 500 milliamps higher than the bias the amperage that you started with. In other words, if you started at 400 milliamps with the PA bias set on zero with the radio keyed up, then you're going to want to turn the PA bias up until you get to 900 milliamps on your amp meter. Let me say that again. You want to be 500 milliamps higher than your starting PA bias with the PA bias set at zero. I hope that made sense and it's very very important to set the PA bias. Now what I also did once I got my PA bias set on USB then I simply went up to the CW PA bias 
and I changed to CW mode, keyed it up, and I just set the CW PA bias at 36, which is the same that I had it set for on the uh, USB PA bias. Now, you're also going to want to calibrate your power output. And it's actually pretty simple to do. Right now, I'm on 40 meters, and I'm going to change my PA to 5 watts, and uh, I'm going to change, it really doesn't matter that much what mode you're in, but I'm going to change to USB mode. For this, you can simply hit the tune button. Now again, you want to have a good dummy load and watt meter in line in order to adjust this. And you simply hit the tune button, and when you hit the tune button, you watch your watt meter. And you can see, hopefully, my watt meter says 5 watts on it, so I've got that calibrated properly. If I need to change it, I simply turn the RIT knob to change it until I see 5 watts on my watt meter. Now I'm going to take it back out of tune mode. That, that's pretty simple. You just got to go through all the bands and calibrate your output for 5 watts and full output. This is, I found this is some of the more crucial things that you need to adjust on the radio. I am going to show you how to also calibrate the frequency, but I encourage you, just look at the link that I provide in the description of this video. Follow that link out, and it will give you all of the adjustments that you will need to go through on this radio. And once you get it adjusted, it is one great little radio. For the price, I just don't think you can beat it. I want you to also note, before you quit out of the menu, once you get everything set, hold the exit button down until it says that it's saving all of the settings that you just changed. Now I'm going to go back up and hide this menu. And with regards to the frequency calibration, you go into the config menu, the configuration menu, you open that up and you go down until you get to the frequency calibrate option. Now this minus set at minus 5.9. That's not necessarily going to be what you set your particular radio at. And I'm going to show you how to calibrate the frequency. With regards to calibrating the frequency on this radio, the best way to do it is with a frequency counter. I don't have that. There are several other ways to do it. I'm going to show you how the way how I set up my frequency calibration. Again, there's several different ways to do it. This may not be the best way, but I'm going to work with the equipment that I have. If you notice over here, I have a Yaesu FT710 setting in the background. I have it on CW on 21025 just like the radio here is on CW21025. Now on my Yaesu, I made sure that I turned break-in off and I made sure that I turned the keyer off. The reason I did that was so that I could key the radio up without any output whatsoever. You'll hear the side tone on the Yaesu. I'm going to key it up and you can hear that. Now, when I key up the radio by hitting the tune button, the RS918, make sure that you have your AFG and your side tone gain to zero on the little 918, and you will hear the tone coming through my Yaesu FT710. Now, in order to calibrate the frequency, it's actually pretty simple. I need to zero beat or spot that particular signal coming out of the RS918 into the ASU FT710. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit the tune button on the RS918. And at the same time, I'm going to key up 
or use the keyer to key up the Yesu and you'll hear those tones they do not match up in order to get the tones to match up I'm going to turn the rip knob to adjust my frequency calibrate and you can hear right there that is zero spotted zero beaded so I am dead on frequency now I would caution you don't change this uh, don't adjust this until you've used the radio for a little bit let it get good and warm and then calibrate your frequency again it's fairly simple to calibrate I hope I explained that well I have my Yesu set up with break in off and the key are off so it's acting like a straight key where I can simply hear the tone coming out of the Yesu I hit the tune button on the RS918 now you hear the tone in the Yesu now I'm going to key the Yesu up and you hear those tones just match up perfectly there which means I'm pretty much spot on frequency you can hear what happens how that tone gets choppy the further off frequency that you get and that's pretty much perfectly aligned that's pretty simple on calibrating the frequency with using the equipment that you have available again I don't have a frequency counter and I found that this was the easiest way to calibrate the frequency and again with regards to a lot of the other configuration settings and calibration just follow the link that's included in the description on this video if you have any questions don't hesitate to email me on my QRZ email address I love playing around with this little radio I've said it many times for the price I don't think you can beat it for a fun radio to play with and if you enjoyed the video I would ask that you subscribe to my channel I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you and God bless.